All right, what's going on, folks? This is Matt here with Darkwind Linux Tech and Gaming, where this is the fusion of Linux technology and gaming. I don't do hardware reviews, usually not my thing, but what happens when Walmart, of all places, resurrects a brand that has not been available generically for most consumers since 2007? What's that brand? Well, quite frankly, that brand is one that most from my childhood and teenage years would remember as the cow machines. That would be the lovely company known as Gateway. And the question becomes, how good is this $170 Gateway computer? So Walmart and technology is not generically something I usually put two and two together with. Usually the result equals somewhere about negative five on that scale of how good it's going to be. So let's get into the system specs of this particular machine first. System specs is a 14.1 full HD 1920 by 1080 screen. Eight gigs of DDR4 RAM soldered to the board, unfortunately, so non-upgradable. A 256 gig to SSD and a powered by a Ryzen 5 3500U with Vega 8 graphics. So by no means is this a powerhouse machine at $170. Is it good? That's a tough one because you can buy some really good eBay machines for a little less. Let's talk ports first. So ports wise, the first thing you're going to get on this particular machine is you're going to get your power port. Then you're going to get a USB 3.0 port. Then you're going to get a upside down HDMI port. Don't know why. Uh, you do have a USB-C connector. I don't believe it's going to do a lot of the things most people would like it to do, but it does. It's there. You have another USB 3.0 USB-A port, a uh, headphone microphone jack, and a micro SD card slot. So overall, port-wise, pretty good selection for what it is. Uh, is it thick? Not really a heavy machine. I will say build quality-wise, well, that's where things get a little problematic. So for a $170 machine, I'm not expecting carbon fiber. I'm not expecting any of that kind of, you know, metal or anything on like a new machine. This machine is front to back plastic. You can feel it when you pick it up the like there's flex in the the back end of the display there is flex on the keyboard keyboard in and of itself which is another problematic area is um the only way i can explain it is the keys have like hollow feeling when typing on them like satisfying click there's no weight to the keys at all you feel like you're not actually typing sometimes as far as like pricing the right stuff the other issue that i have found now this came with windows 11 <laughs> windows 11 did not stay on this machine however the problem became this uses an out um, specifically re linux related i'm not blaming the hardware specifically this is more of a user issue this is a lack of research on my end but trying to actually find some info on the hardware was kind of not easy especially when it comes to networking cards. Now, I have not had these issues with Wi-Fi cards for a long time. This particular machine requires an out-of-kernel module to be installed. Bluetooth works out of the box. Wi-Fi doesn't. Actually trying to find the right one was kind of a pain. It was either 8821CU for the Realtek, if you actually look in the uh, Arch repositories or Ubuntu stuff. So do keep that in mind. As far as how this performs with Linux specifically, I'm using Garuda uh, just because it has a lot of the features and functions quickly built in that I don't have to do a lot of the, the customizing and all that stuff myself for applications. First run, click, 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 all that stuff's done. So I'm good. Hence the reason for Garuda. Overall performance is solid i'm not going to call it fantastic my my quantification for fantastic and performance is pretty low uh battery life is really good though i will say that uh amd has come a long way from their old machines when they were like the jaguar processors and stuff uh the the old apus the underpower of the machine and whatnot uh obs 
at least with the automatic wizard is 720p 30 for what it would recommend for recording anyway uh wi-fi when it does work and you get it working it works fantastically i haven't had much of an issue as far as that uh do note because it's about a kernel module though it might might break when a kernel updates just keep that in mind not always but it can so overall what do i think of this particular machine is it good is it bad is it horrible it's a 170 dollar new quote unquote machine the best thing i can say is it functions i have low expectations this is a chromebook but it is more functional than a chromebook uh as a linux machine specifically as a linux machine it does have its issues but that's more of a hardware issue specifically to the machine and not so much a linux related issue i've seen a lot of machines that are bad for 170 dollars and i've seen a lot of machines that are good for 170 dollars uh, I'm, I'm thinking of the thinkpad i think it's the 470s is a fantastic machine you can get for around 170. we are also getting a used system so how do you look at that I like the fact that it's newer, but because it's not a thing like a ThinkPad or et cetera, all the replacement type parts that you can get are going to be really, really hard and annoying to actually find more than likely. So if you got 170 bucks burning in your wallet, I'm not saying it's a bad machine and you can do far worse, but I would probably recommend looking elsewhere if you're concerned about build quality and parts availability. If you're just a consumer looking for a decent machine, you could do worse. So I, I'm giving it probably like a C because the, the build quality is the thing that kills it for me as, as a just overall feel of the machine. But the thing that really kills it for me, like as a Linux user specifically, is that that, that Wi-Fi. Um, and again, that's a Linux issue, but... I have to take it as an overall package and that experience is not fantastic but it is not the worst and that's the best thing i can say about a 170 dollar machine